I'm Prerit Garg. I'm the president and co-founder of SimForm. I come with, with a long background at Microsoft, with over 12, 13 years in Windows Server. So that's sort of my background. And worked on Windows security infrastructure, um, systems management infrastructure that uh, our partners use every day. Uh, that's my background. I think, uh, I think my pedigree has everything to do with the uh, with how I saw, because I joined Microsoft in 1995, so how I saw Microsoft become so big uh, uh, in the server business particularly was largely through a very indirect approach to selling and getting technology out there, largely through a partner network, right? Uh, all the way through OEM business uh, as well as through the reseller business. Um, so that's very much uh, in my, you can sort of say, in my blood. Um, that you can't sell, you can't scale the business uh, directly uh, the way you can through a partner network. There are a couple of things to think about when you think about the partner uh, partners. One of them is how are you going to drive uh, revenue growth for them? Uh, how do they, how do you give them something that's a no-brainer to sell? Right. Uh, that's sort of how I think about the problem. That sort of comes again from the pedigree. Um, we looked at the backup and disaster recovery space, and it's sort of this, it's like insurance policy, right? Everybody's got to have it. Uh, as more and more of data is now digital for businesses, it's become the thing that everybody's got to have it. And But everybody, if you think from a small business perspective, they think of it like buying insurance. Uh, and well, you only want to spend X amount of dollars when you go looking for insurance, because you're going to rationalize the problem of A if it is more than a certain number of dollars. Uh, and everybody does that, right? I'm sure you, when you go buy insurance for anything, you do that. While everybody wants it, there is a price point that it makes sense. So now you kind of do the reverse math. If that's the price point a customer is going to pay, uh, how do you make sure your partners are going to make enough money uh, selling it? Because if, if they're not going to make money, they're going to pick up all the hassle and not, not have any motivation to do it. Uh, so that's really how you look at the economics of the equation. We just happened to have run into a technology um, that just created that economic model. Um, trying to do this using data centers uh, would have been impossible to create those economics. Um, so the beauty of leveraging local storage and create this distributed storage system is suddenly we've taken a lot of the cost of goods out of the equation. So it's like selling Windows Server when you're at Microsoft. Um, there is R&D, but once you sell a copy of Windows, every copy of Windows doesn't really have cost of goods. Uh, we're sort of in the same business. There's no bottom line cost of goods for us. So now you can really look and say, oh, the customer is willing to pay $50 a month, $100 a month, $200 a month, depending on the size of the customer. How do you take that and push bulk of that margin to your partners and then uh, take a certain portion of that and drive the business through scale, right? Um, so that's what we're, we're focused on. It's all about drive and creating a no-brainer service, of course, right? That everybody, uh, it, all our partners tell us this as well as like, we'll have it at every, every one of our customers, which is a wonderful thing to be. Now you can actually see the scale in the business. I think while we understood the economics of the business model, um, I think we knew that this idea of using local storage to create this distributed online storage system uh, had a couple of challenges. Challenge number one was people's data was going to sit at other people's place. Uh, right? Another challenge was other people's data was going to come, come sit at my place. Right? So it's like, it's like both directions have, have a problem to think about. Right? Um, so making sure you, so that, that sort of fundamentally said that while the economics are right, you better address the security issue head on. Right? You have to start the conversation by explaining why the system is not only secure right, and reliable and available, it's, um, it's actually going to uh, meet the, the concerns that people have. Right? And it comes down to a couple of levels. One is trust in the people who are building it right, and the technology itself. And I think the first one uh, we realized got addressed because of our background, right? As ex-Windows Server guys, a uh, bunch of the security infrastructure work we had done, uh, we were able to get our foot through the door, is the way I'll sort of phrase it, which is uh, our partners were willing to at least listen. I was like, okay, you seem to have a background that you must be talking some sense. So I think that was a good foot through the door. But you had to follow that up 
by explaining how the system actually made sure that the data was secured before it left the customer premises, how it was spread in a way that it was actually more secure than data centers. Another aspect is our partners are very technically savvy. So we're not trying to sell. So this goes to the other side of why we're not selling direct. Um, we're selling through a channel which is very technically savvy. They're essentially the IT um, uh, people for their business, for the businesses they serve. So we're going and selling to folks that understand technology, that deal with technology every day. So it becomes an easier conversation when you actually explain how the system works. Uh, and that has kind of worked to our advantage, the credibility as well as having a technically savvy channel uh, to go sell. So today, um, and this is a policy because we don't sell direct, we uh, farm all of the leads, direct leads that come through our website to our partners in the area. So we connect them to whosoever is the most active partner we have in a given area. Uh, we hand the lead over and the partner takes on that lead and sort of, uh, and this way we think that we can actually build more trust with our partners and potentially help them grow their business. Um, um, uh, Kevin Brown likes to say this, which is, um, you know, a lot of our partners have a challenge moving from breakfast fixed business on to moving to a managed service provider business or an MSP business. And a big part of that is the market they're serving, again, has a dollar cap, how many dollars a month they're willing to spend. So a service that is $50 a month to $100 a month uh, uh, is an easy sell to get your foot through the door for our partners as well. So that's another way we look at it is like, how do our partners move from a serve, uh, a basically a break-fix business and use this kind of insurance policy business to actually get their foot through the door and start selling a managed service business and grow that business. Because once you have your foot through the door and the customer starts to get comfortable, the idea that they're just like they pay for their electricity and their insurance policies, they pay a month uh, for IT, they're gonna get comfortable and they'll sort of grow that as a budget exercise. Um, so we, we look at that as another act, uh, act to sort of help our partners.